King of the jungle is usually a name given to lions, but the truth is they're more like the king of the grasslands or maybe king of the forest, but I guess that doesn't really roll off the tongue. So let's bust some myths and spit some facts about. You might be surprised to know that lions don't just live in Africa, but we'll get to that later. First, let's talk about African lions. They currently stalk these territories. The habitats are typically grasslands, savannah, and open woodlands. They've specifically adapted to their environments, being at home in the open plains. But the most isolated and different lions live in the Gur Forest in India, known as the Asiatic lion. With some 700 remaining, these guys are one plague or wildfire away from becoming completely extinct. Historically, these blonde beauties have lived in Europe and the Middle East, and much, much more of India. But over the last thousand years, their territories have retreated. Lions exhibit uh, what's known as sexual dimorphism, which means that between the male and female, there are significant differences in size and appearance. This type of dimorphism is prevalent in species where the males have to compete over territory and females. Same goes for humans, gorillas, and a few others. But what this means for lions is the males often weigh almost twice the weight at 500 pounds, and the females weigh up to about 300 pounds. So pretty significant difference. But of course, that's not the most iconic thing about lions. The most iconic thing about a lion is, of course, its mane. This distinctive feature very from blonde to black and can vary in length from long to short, with the Asiatic lions in particular having shorter manes and the Barbary lion having a blacker mane. The mane was once believed to serve multiple purposes, like protecting the throat and neck in a fight with another lion, ultimately to stop claws and teeth. But more recently, it's been made clear it's not the case. The main role of a mane is in signaling dominance within its pride. A fuller and darker mane is usually an indicator of health, meaning lions with the fuller, darker manes are more likely to reproduce and have wee babies. Lions are also the second largest cat, but don't let that fool you, second place doesn't mean second best. While I couldn't find any definitive numbers, I did find evidence to suggest that lions are the true heavyweight champions of the cat world, and in particular when it comes to strike force, with some stories going as far to suggest that a grizzly had its back broken by a lion in a circus. Let's pause for a moment. I found this photo when I was editing this video. Did people actually want to watch a bear do this kind of stuff? That's insane, right? This poor bastard is being tied up and forced to perform tricks for a crowd. That's, I guess, Hollywood too. But anyway, back to the video. Of course, a circus is a different circumstance for an animal and you don't know the health of these things. But if it's true, it's still pretty impressive. To give you an indication of this type of force, and this is without any firm measurements. So I can't say for sure if a tiger or a lion has a stronger swipe force. Tigers have an estimated 10,000 pounds of force behind their swipe. So I can only imagine what that means for lions. And I mean, to be honest, I can only imagine what that's going to mean for the like button when you hit it with that amount of force. All right. But seriously, one thing that I could find a more definitive answer for was bite force. And that come in at around a thousand PSI. And as we mentioned in the tiger video, that's a lot of pounds. Being enough to easily crush bones or snap necks like twigs. Some stories I could find from lion tamers as well when comparing tigers to lions was, was that they'd much rather be swiped by a tiger whose claws are like knives because when you get swiped by a lion, they grip you like hooks. There's no getting away <laughs> at that point. And as you probably know by now, since you watched the tiger video, or well, you can go watch it after this one, the panthera family, which the lions belong to, can't purr. But man, can they roar, especially the lions. Lions have the loudest of all the roars of the big cats. Being audible from up to five miles away. And they're the only known big cat to roar as a group, with the Pride's collective roar sending out a warning to everyone in their area, hoping to invade their territory. Speaking of Pride, the next most iconic thing lions are known for... Lions are unique amongst big cats, being the only ones to live in a group called the Pride. Prides typically consist of six to ten females, their little terrors, and two to four unrelated males. No kissing cousins allowed. The males that end up in a pride tend to be from another pride that they've been booted out of by their dad or uncles and aunts. This helps with the no kissing cousins rule. Much like our fairy house babies, lions exhibit strong social bonds through various behaviors such as grooming, playing, and communal care for the young cubs. Grooming in particular is an essential social behavior for between lions, serving not only to strengthen bonds, but also to help maintain hygiene amongst the pride. It's like being in a big group shower and asking your buddies to help scrub the hard to reach places. All this grooming and socializing, it's all to create a unit, a community of lions that will defend each other and their cubs together. Lions are most active during the twilight hours, and that's usually when the hunting begins. Also, fun fact, lions actually love hunting in storms because it's particularly dark and the sounds help to master approach on their prey, making them much harder to detect. Lionesses are the primary hunters, and when they're out getting themselves some zebra steak for dinner, 
The dads are at home looking after the cubs. These big fellas are playing the important role of bouncer and daddy daycare. Like I mentioned before, lions are much, much bigger than the females. And being dense meathead daddies means that if a pack of hyenas want to come try and doing some drive-by chewing and some cubs, the lions are equipped to put a stop to that funny business. One common misconception, however, which is steadily being debunked, is that males just don't hunt. But it turns out they do, just mostly alone. And of course, from time to time, they'll hunt with the females. And there is cases of males stepping in to finish off particularly difficult prey. But I will admit, lion social dynamics are a bit weird. And the rules seem to change pride to pride and individual to individual. Some male lions will, depending on the situation, eat first, step aside and let others eat, or just join in with the group. But one thing that has remained true is lionesses do actually tend to fall lower in the pecking order. And being fairly heavily reliant on the male lions to protect their cubs and themselves means sacrificing a little bit of food for that added security. Linus has figured out a long time ago that being in a place that has the biggest and meanest animals on the planet meant needing to work together. They raise their cubs together, they hunt together, and they defend their territory together. People think everything in Australia is trying to kill you. Good luck camping in sub-Saharan Africa. At least the things that can kill you in Australia are mostly trying to avoid you. Imagine hearing lions roar or giggling back of hyenas while you're trying to sleep. Got a tent between you and the outside world, stuff that. Sadly, the king of fluff is steadily in decline. Estimates vary as to how many of these wildcats are left. It's somewhere between 20 and 40,000. Though more recent data suggests it's probably closer to 20,000. Their populations are spread across a range of different areas, including national parks, game reserves, wildlife sanctuaries, private reserves, and conservation areas. But despite this, habitat loss is easily one of the most significant problems facing lions today. Along with fragmentation due to human activities, such as agriculture, urbanization and infrastructure development. As habitats shrink, lion populations face increased competition for resources. Often this means hunting cattle, which leads them in direct conflict with humans, with farmers going after lions in retaliatory killings for the predation of their livestock. And one of the most well-known issues facing lions, poachers. Lions are still targeted by poachers sadly, and this is largely driven by traditional medicines as well as trophy hunting and the illegal wildlife trade. You can also help out with the lion conservation by going to WWF's website link in the description, and going through their Adopt a Lion page. To learn more about lion-striped cousins, click here.